Hey guys, it's Frack again. Sorry it's been a while since I made the last guide for this trial. Honestly, I got too lazy to make it, but y'all seem to really like them, and I have a lot of time right now, so let's go. It's been a while since I've been in Dreadsail, so here's an old clip during the Lost Depths patch. For most people, their tail area is going to look very similar, but for teams with very high damage, you might want to do a more aggressive strat, which I'll explain towards the end of the vid. Like my previous guides for Dreadsail, I'm going to assume that you know most of the normal mechanics for the fight, but in case you don't, I'll leave some written guides below, so be sure to check those out. Anyways, the group should start the fight by lining up with the hard mode banner. I'll explain why later. Most of the fight is going to be stack and burn, while the main tank is off to the side. The group should stay right outside of Teleria's cleave, as you can see right here. Teleria is going to spawn a behemoth a few seconds into the fight, and the off tank should drag it into group to be cleaved. She spawns a behemoth every 30 to 40 seconds. She also does her maelstrom every 30 to 40 seconds, which is the AoE attack where she spins her swords. During Maelstrom, the main tank should stack with the group for a few seconds for better heals. Anyways, the behemoth is going to leave AoEs where it smashes, so the off tank should aim the AoEs to the sides like this. Here's a diagram of what two slams should look like. The main reason for the small gap between the AoEs is for people to have room to use melee skills. And ideally the behemoth should die before getting a third slam out. The sooner it dies, the better. As for her wave mechanic, I like to count one second when she slams her swords in the ground, then roll. After she does her first wave, Ice Storm is going to happen, and it lasts for 45 seconds. So remember earlier when I mentioned the group lines themselves with the banner? This is because one side of the Ice Storm is going to spawn near the banner, and since Ice Storm does no damage in the first few seconds, you can walk through it if needed. In this case, it's going to the right of group, so the group stays but the main tank runs through to be on the same side as the group. If Ice Storm went the other direction, then the group would have walked through Ice Storm and followed it with the main tank trailing behind. Stay close to the Ice Storm, but stop during Maelstrom for heals. The main tank can use this time to run ahead of group. I forgot the reason why the main tank does this, but I think it makes it easier for the healers. Three matrons will spawn during Ice Storm, so be sure to kill them. Typically, everyone laying a couple dots on them is enough, but I think Arcanist can beam both Teleria and a matron. Matrons will spawn throughout the later parts of the fight too. Kill any that are nearby or on the way to a bridge. Once Ice Storm is over, it's basically stack and burn again until 50%. Real quick though, there's a small detail about Ice Storm that's worth knowing. So, Ice Storm happens every 60 seconds, and this timer resets to 60 when Teleria spawns a mage at 50, 35, and 20%. So, if damage is ideal, you can do the entire 50% to 0 with no Ice Storms, since she'll keep resetting the timer. Another small detail is if Ice Storm is active and Teleria gets pushed to a mage spawn, she cancels the Ice Storm and delays the next one up to 110 seconds. Also, for the Deluge mechanic, it's pretty simple, just go in the water right before it explodes. But it does get sketchy when the yellow snare bubble is out. If that's the case, it's usually safer to roll into the water if possible. Once she hits 50%, she spawns the first mage. Wait to see where the bridge is, then shift over. Here's a diagram of which mage spawns where, and what debuff they give. Typically, groups will have 2 to 3 DPS for a bridge team. At least one of them should have Echoing Vigor for a group heal. 
Some groups have two separate bridge teams, which works well too. Anyways, the main group should be to the left side of the bridge. This is because when the mage eventually comes down, they'll spawn next to the group. The off tank can just drag it closer to get cleaved. Be sure that the mage dies quickly. From here, it's basically rinse and repeat for the second mage at 35%. For most groups, damage should be good enough to ignore the third mage at 20% and just kill the boss. But if it isn't, then just do the same thing for the third mage. And that's pretty much it. Now I'm just going to explain the more advanced score pushing strat. For groups with very high damage, a newer strat is to send one DPS to do the first bridge. This DPS should have their own major breach and off balance. This allows more DPS to stay on the boss and if damage is high enough, you can ignore the second mage and kill the boss. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys found this helpful, and if y'all have any questions, be sure to leave a comment. I'll leave any extra details in the description if I forgot anything, but yeah, I'll see y'all later.